But everything just seems to be better in life once baseball is here. And granted, we're in a lockout. I get it. But here's one thing that you should get pumped up for this upcoming season of Major League Baseball is if you're a Kansas City Royals fan, you know damn good and well that Bobby Witt Jr. will be on the big club at some point this season. And if it's not opening day like how I want him to be, then I don't know what you're doing. And when I know, by me saying I don't know what you're doing, I know exactly what you're doing. You're trying to control him for that 20 games, add another year of his contract uh, to him, another year of service time like we I discussed and dissect all last week. They're, that's what they're that's what they're going to do. It, and that's that's the smart play. That's to keep him under control. It depends on how the CBA uh, goes, negotiates wise. Because we'll get to it a little bit later. But Bobo says that well, there's a good chance that we're going to be coming back on the 15th. That's three days away. I don't think it's happening, but that's just me. But here's something for the Kansas City Royals fans is to knowing that you had this top prospect, and we haven't had a buzz in the Kansas City Royals organization of a top prospect. I would say since Eric Hosmer. A positional player, Hosmer, Hosmer and Mustakas had a, a, a good, great buzz when they were coming up through the minor minor leagues. Like they they were they were on it. People were like, okay, we can't wait for this guy. We can't wait for these uh, these uh, these two studs to come up here and they're going to help this team win a World Series because that's exactly what they did. They went to two World Series and won one. That's what I feel the buzz around Bobby Witt Jr. like this from what happened all last year. Then we see the. MJ Melendez is just stroking it, leading the entire minor leagues in home runs, which he should be on the opening day roster. That's just me. Or even just Nick Prado, someone saying that his gloves are even better than Eric Hosmer was when the, his time was during the in the minors. So there's something to be proud of and be happy for and to look forward to, even though there's a lockout amongst us right now, but there's things that there's going to be a baseball played. I'll let you know that right now. There will be baseball played this year because – both sides can't afford to lose money. And when they play, they're, they're, we're going to see Bobby Witt Jr. this year. And I even I tweeted out, does Bobby Witt Jr. make the opening day lineup? 90% of you all said yes. That's awesome. Like, because I, they're hands down, people tweet me back, like the, Jeremy Wyatt, the, the monarch here in Kansas City. Yes, third base, hitting sixth. That's what he said. And like Tyrell Linville also replied back to me and said, he has to wait at least till June, I believe, or not, so he lose some time on his contract. Granted, he's thinking like an owner. I want to thank it like a player. And I, I just want him up there. And Dusty Likens tweets at me saying, duh. Like, what, 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 what are you talking about? A friend of the show, Dusty Likens. No, like, you can do so much with Bobby Witt Jr. for the Kansas City Royals. That's the thing. Say spring training happens, say someone doesn't make the big club, that's a shock, kind of like how we saw Nicky Lopez not make the big club last year and gets called up and plays the entire 162 and just hits 300, does exactly what you're supposed to do to keep your butt up in the majors. He did that. Congratulations, Nicky Lopez, stud. But we can see, like, a, like say if Mondi gets hurt in spring training, so that's the inevitable. Alberto Mondi is going to get hurt some point this year. We, we know this. Like, as... as Consumers of the Royals baseball product, we know that's going to happen. It's bound to happen. We don't know how long, how many games he will play. We just know he's going to play a few games, no matter what. Maybe he's not healthy. Maybe Whit Merrifield isn't healthy. And I hate talking about the health factor, but you have to like plan this in your mind where you have to think ahead, especially in baseball. You always have to think ahead. You have to think ahead. You have to worry about that game that day. But with the health and player safety wise, you got to think ahead just in case. Like, oh man, if this doesn't happen. If he goes on a slump, um, numbers are trending down that way. That's why you have an analytics department. That's that. That's why you have that. And the thing with Bobby Wood Jr. is, he plays shortstop now. Him, what, is he like twenty years old, twenty one years old? He's young. You could play him in center field. You could play him at third base. You could play him at second base. You could bat him first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. You could even DH him if you want. Let him, let him take a day off. Here's the thing. What isn't talked about that is needs to be talked about is the fact that you can mold this kid into anything you want because you have him under control in your, in your organization. You can be like, hey, can we try you out at center field? Can we try you? Like, let me, let's see what you can do at third base this entire spring training. If he doesn't get a, um, a, a spring training invite, that's stupid. He, he deserves to be there. Except for the, the AAA spring training. No, we, he needs to be in the big club spring training. You could do so much with him. 
And that's that's the best part about it is the fact that he's versatile. He, that's what you want in a player. We've seen this a lot more. Look at a guy like Chris Bryant. I'm not comparing the two, but I'm just saying, like Chris Bryant, he gets called up to the majors. He plays third base. And when he's in the Chicago Cubs organization, he played left field. He played center field. Heck, he played left, center, and third when he got traded to the Giants this, this past year. He wants to stay at one position and one position only. Granted, he has put his time, he put his dues in. Heck, he's a former MVP of this league, of the National League. Chris Bryant wants to stay in center field. He wasn't even called to play in center field. He was called to be a third baseman. And the fact that he wants to be in center field full-time, that shows you something. Maybe Bobby Witt Jr. gets that taste of playing center field. Granted, I know you have a, you have a gold glove center fielder right now in Michael A. Taylor. But is Michael A. Taylor going to produce that gold glove into a silver slugger? Can he do that? Probably not. There's so many center fielders that are great hitters that there's no way Michael A. Taylor, unless he hits 335, dry, hits 35 home runs, and drives in the 100. I don't see him doing that, but I see Bobby Witt Jr. doing that. I can see Bobby Witt Jr.'s bat doing that constantly, and he, we already know what he can do with the glove at short. So that can easily transition to center field. Look at Fernando Tatis Jr. out in San Diego. He played shortstop, and then when they were trying to like mix and mingle the lineup, like when his shoulder was messing up, they were like, you know what, let's play him out in center field. He can run down on stuff, and uh, it's less throwing, less more arm movement out there, but he can still patrol the area. Granted, he played, what, three or four games out in center field, and they moved him back to uh, shortstop just to test it out. That's what the Padres didn't do correctly. They didn't try to test this out before or after they made that trade to get him from the White Sox organization, or they didn't even try to do anything inside their own organization in San Diego. They just did it when he was up in the majors. Granted, it worked for Chris Bright. It didn't work for David Tatis Jr., but why can't it work for Bobby Witt Jr. unless you try it out? I think the best lineup the Kansas City Royals will have if Bobby Witt Jr. is in it and is playing center field. That means Witt's either in right or at second base, or that means you're going to have Nicky Lopez in your lineup. You're going to have Alberto Mondesi in your lineup and Witt. You need, I believe you need all three of those guys, including Bobby Witt Jr. as your fourth, in order for this lineup to produce, succeed, and just score a lot of runs. Because what I get from Alberto Mondesi, Nicky Lopez, and Witt Merrifield is if, if Nicky can bat, still bat 300, and if we see Alberto Mondesi's bat come alive like it did when he was healthy this past year, and also during the, the final 30 games, that 60-game sprint two years ago, if we see that and you add Bobby Witt Jr. to that, that is going to be explosive. And what I mean by explosive is you're going to see home runs. I don't see Bobby Witt Jr. hitting that 30-home run mark in his first rookie year, but we could see maybe a, a 15 home runs. But the thing is I want to get to is the stolen bases we might see in Kansas City between those four guys and Bobby Witt Jr., Nicky Lopez, Whit Merrifield, and Adalberto Mondesi. They're going to get on base. They're going to get their fair share of hits. It's whether or not they're going to stretch it to a double. They're going to stretch it to a triple because Kaufman, we all know this is a big ballpark. It triples heaven. You get that in the gap and that's going to roll. Oh, it rolls for a mile. It rolls for a mile. And we can see Royals, I see, can break so many records with those four guys and their lineup for either stolen bases, doubles, or triples. Especially the stolen bases department. Like The, the Royals, we've, we all know they've been built on defense and speed. Always. That's pretty much how they got there into the World Series. Granted, they had their pitching. They added Kendrick Smirlaus, a power bat. We saw the power come from Moustakis and Hosmer. Granted, they had that homegrown talent and power. But we saw with the St. Louis Cardinals last year where the power and defense helped. So if you got two of those things, whether if you get on if you can get on base, that, that's awesome. And a defense, awesome. You need to get on base and defense. The Cardinals did that last year. They got on base via, via the home run, granted. But their defense was exceptional. That's why they went on that, that what, 18, 19, 20 game winning streak last year. Why can't the Royals do that? Why can't we think the Royals can do that? That's one thing and one thing only. Pitching. Pitching. The pitching is huge for the Royals. And what we saw last year between the, the, the young guys, granted, they're young. You need to give them the innings. You need to let them work through it. They, you need to let them fail. You need to let them succeed. Look at Daniel Lynch. He came up, he failed, went down, came back, succeeded. One of the best pitchers in the second half of Major League Baseball last year, Daniel Lynch. And he's only 23 years old or 24 years old or 25. What I'm getting at is he's young. 
these everybody in this Orioles organization in the pitching de- department and a little bit of the fielding is young. And I want Bobby Witt Jr. up here to experience it with all the young pitchers, with all like to get mentored by uh, Whit Merrifield. I would love for Bobby Witt Jr. to get uh, be man- mentored by Whit. Uh, granted, they probably st- they probably talk to this day. If not, that, that Bobby, you need you need to start at, uh, talking to Whit because I mean you saw what Whit did mentoring uh, Brady Singer this past year, or two years, or three years, or however long they've known each other. They always tease each other. Granted, they make it fun, poking fun and everything, especially with Brad Keller. Like That's a fun thing. It's a fun environment. It is fun. It, they're playful. They're, they, they're enjoyable to everybody around each other. Bring Bobby Witt Jr. up there to experience that and to grow. I don't care how old he is. Get him up there. He is ready. The only thing that scares me, though, about me saying that he's ready is, is he truly ready? Because we already know the, the gap between AAA and Major League Baseball. Look at Jared Kelnick of last year, the Seattle Mariners. He got his first hit in his first game. Then he went on an 0 for 39. An 0 for 39. No hits. He had put out 39 times in a row. Gets sent down. Tears it up in AAA once he got sent down. Gets called back up, and he was an above-average hitter in Major League Baseball because he had to fail to come back up. Fans... If Bobby Witt Jr. comes up here and gets called up here and does that, gets that first hit and goes for an 0 for 50, don't lose hope. Don't lose hope whatsoever. Baseball is a game of failure. Think about this. You can have an average of an F, of, like a, of a letter grade, an average of an F and still make the Hall of Fame. You can get, every, you can get a hit three times out of ten and you'll make the Hall of Fame. If you do that every single year, every 10 at-bats, you get three hits. You can make the Hall of Fame. Now, granted, if unless you are Barry Bonds, you're not going to make the Hall of Fame. But still, you I, don't be scared or nervous when or if Bobby Witt Jr. does get called up, he slumps, gets sent back down, tears it up, and you get excited like, okay, is he going to keep coming up here and do this? Because we saw this happen with Daniel Lynch. Granted, two different positions. But we saw this happen with Daniel Lynch. He was tipping his pitches. I'll put air quotes on that because, granted, was he really? Yeah, he was. Tipping that change up. Gets sit down, worked on it. Come back being a stud. We're going to see this. It's growing pains. Everybody has it. Everybody has it. It's what you can do to overcome those growing pains. Granted, we haven't seen him yet. Or this is all speculation talk right now. Bobby Witt Jr., he needs to be in the Major League lineup. He does. He needs to be in that opening day lineup, either playing center field, shortstop, third base, or second base. Hell, put him at first base. Because, I mean, if the Royals trade Carlos Santana since the universal DH is a thing, the Royals might have been opening up to talks with, like, spreading it out a lot more and be like, hey, darn it, we should have waited another year to trade Jorge Soler, but he got more value out of him because now the DH is in national league now but you can you can actually have someone overpay you for carlos santana in the national league i mean santana in the national league really didn't pan out when he was in philadelphia for that one year but i mean if you can make a, a deal happen to trade carlos santana go for it i think you should he wants to play until he's 40 i think he's like 34 now so he's he's, he's on the downward tilt of his entire major league baseball career so why not try to tender of trading him so you can, in order to open up a spot, say, for a Bobby Witt Jr. or open up a spot for a MJ Melendez because, say, first base is open, put Salvador Perez over there, put MJ at first base or at, at catcher, or if you just want to keep Salvi at catcher and put uh, bring up Nick Prado, like you can do so much, and it's it's weird to think you can do so much with one guy just blocking you, just one guy blocking you, and that one guy blocking you is in the majors, and he's a DH, he's been in the league for like what ten years. Carlos Santana is good. He was really good last year for the Royals, uh, and he the, the walks kept coming. Then that second half happened, and the walks stopped. Didn't get on base that much. But granted, the Royals were a a better team in that second half than they were in the first half. There were literally the Royals last year only had one bad month of baseball, just one bad month. That one bad month was it was a, a dread. It was a slide. I feel bad for uh, Vern had to live through it all. The Royals insider over at 610 Sports Radio, Josh Vernier, he 
he lived through it all. He understood it. He's like, this is the, he because I remember talking to him. He's like, this team is just like it's there, but it's just losing those close games. They'll get blown out every once in a while, but they lose those close games. I, I get it. I they, yeah, we watched this. And they had that that great second half of Major League Baseball. They they, they were they they were a top ten league team in the second half. I, I I see the Royals doing good things this year. I really do. I think the Royals are making a big step forward, and this is a team that's going to finish right at five hundred or above. That's just how I think. But it all needs to happen with Bobby Witt Jr. in the lineup opening day. It all comes down to. That's how I think. 